I just want everyone to know. What the <laughs> hell, Kaya? <laughs> that, that we were planning out future episodes before this. And Caroline, I like re- was writing on my iPad and I look up and she just got her head back, like absolutely done with life. And I said that her <laughs> nose looks like one of the Charlie Brown noses when like they're like from b- beneath, you know, like. It's you a know, very know. Specific like when they shout. yell, yeah. when they shout, their whole head goes up. Yeah, because like all I saw was your nose and like the bottom of your chin. It was a very like I'm picturesque about to moment. Record or like take a selfie. Maybe we can <laughs> upload it. Uh, we because sure I'm trying to like get it from the angle of the camera. It really looks like it. She did it again, and I I stand by. <laughs> it looks st- alarming is what it looks like. <laughs> The difference is that with Charlie Brown characters, you wouldn't see, like, their throat. They would no. see their mouth. They would be yelling. What would happen? <laughs> <laughs> what angle do I have to be at? Ma, to get <laughs> that actually, I'm not going to say it worked, but it kind of worked. That's alarming. I took a video so I could... Oh, no. That's horrible to see. That's appalling. It's alarming. <laughs> oh, getting that Disney bag. Watch out. I know. We're going to get sued. <laughs> yeah. Literally no difference from the original. That was actually the original. None. <laughs> Couldn't you tell? I sure couldn't. I'm going to see The Little Mermaid tonight, so I'm very excited. I was blasting some Disney music before that. Because I haven't listened to, like, the new songs. Like, I haven't listened to the new soundtrack because I didn't want to, like, spoil anything. So I'm having to go. Spoil anything? Well, like, just, like, how they sound. And they have, oh. like, a few of the newer songs and stuff. I was um, like, Hannah, the story's the same. <laughs> I mean, they, like... Actually, no, but, Eric ends up with Vanessa. <laughs> Spoiler alert. That's a plot twist. Somebody write, like, a Little Mermaid retelling. Oh, but, I bet there Like, is. a historical romance Little Mermaid retelling, mm-hmm. but Vanessa's POV. Vanessa's the heroine. True. Because I feel like we've gotten, like, step-sibling... Or- no, that's co- incorrect. The Wicked Stepsister ones, like Cheris Michaels had one and stuff. Um, again, like Lenora Bell has the Duke Most Wicked Witches Little Mermaid, just for anyone wanting to read that and get in the mood. Um, but yeah, honestly, Vanessa just gets, I mean, I guess I mean, the problem is like Vanessa she's not is real. Ursula. <laughs> yeah. But I, I want like. Well, I mean, there was a I Vanessa like- tech. Technically, in the Lenore Bell one, there is a Vanessa, and she does get her happily ever after in a very funny okay, way. Okay, but I I want a heroine who, like, has been manipulated into this yeah. by Ursula. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I would read that. I would read it. Mm-hmm. Give it to me. Mm-hmm. I've always been like fascinated with like those kind of characters who are like always on the side. Like in um, the Rosalind movie came out with uh, I think it was like Caitlin mm-hmm. Devers or something. Um, because I'm like honestly, she just really dodged a major bullet and got to go have a life. Like good for her. About to take that like not just the villains or like the side mm-hmm. characters. I think that's the Karis Michaels is hers are like side characters. Yeah. I want like you know in Beauty and the Beast during the like the villagers song you know how there's those three blonde like triplet women who are like obsessed with gaston (laughs) i want a series that's one for each of them that they're all just obsessed with the the oh he's so cute those girls i want them to get their heas that would be fun and i want gaston to be like well there is um i feel like this it's not obviously not related at all, but there's a Jenna McGregor series where the series is the premise is um, a guy married three different women. And so the series is about his like widows. Well, technically, he only was legally married to right. one. She's pregnant for the series. And then the first book is about the most recently wed one. So like she was pretty she got off like pretty easily. Um, and then the third one is about like the other um wife who was never a wife but like he stole the money and that's like a hunt about like where to mm, find and i feel like gaston would be that <laughs> that was the last time you ever saw me <laughs> um but i think like that character jack he- antonoff has entered the chat <laughs> <laughs> I'm so little sorry. glasses yeah 
He just I saw appears. T- I saw a tweet one time where it was just like those kind of glasses on the ground. They're like, Jack Antonoff was here. He's been taken out. Um, in peace. So speaking of Gaston, there I just saw like a thing on Instagram. Someone was like promoting it. Was, it's like a dark romance or not anything that I would read. But it was like, what if someone stumbles upon Gaston who didn't actually die in Beauty and the Beast, but he's like scarred and like broken in a river and then someone rescues him and then that's the whole story where i mean it's dark romance so like i don't, all bets are off <laughs> i don't know like doesn't seem something i want to read but i think there's something there with the guest on and those but I, I just I feel like i just hate him so much like yeah he's not one of the villains that i'm interested in seeing no. Rede- no. well actually i guess there aren't a lot of villains that i'm really down with unless no. you're like katie robert uh, yeah uh, facts oh my god i'm so sleepy i know, I know all the listeners are shocked to hear me say that mm-hmm. they're like what caroline <laughs> yawning <laughs> yawning to where she looks like a peanuts character sure i thought you said not penis? peanuts <laughs> i was like oh? she's she's yawning so she looks like a penis I was like, what? Penis yawn, you seen. Yawn, therefore the penis. The peni in your past must be. <laughs> oh my God. The peni? The peni in your past? <laughs> I mean. That's my EP. <laughs> <laughs> Horrifying. <laughs> New and a bit alarming. Is what that is. Ooh. And we I'm have come full tomorrow. circle. The Little Mermaid. Although I just have mm-hmm. to say, I wasn't gonna see it in theaters, not because like I wanted to support, but I was just yeah. gonna wait till it could stream. Yeah. Um, because I have a deeply rooted fear of the ocean. Oh. And I'm yeah. a little bit concerned that if I go see the, I'm gonna go see it anyway because I can't resist mm-hmm. now. I know. Um, yeah. But I'm a little bit concerned that if I go see this like hyper realistic ocean sequence with hyper realistic sea creatures i'm already freaked out by sebastian just from the trailer just just the realistic little sebastian i was like "Mm, don't love that yeah i'm very unsettled by the ocean not looking forward to that however i listen to the soundtrack and now tiktok keeps putting prince eric thirst traps on my page and i'm like yeah i saw because i when he had his buzz cut in the promo, I was like, what? And then I was seeing, like, stills from the movie. I was like, what? I was like, from okay. what I can tell, he's somebody that when you look at him, like, in a picture or even just in the trailer, you're like, okay, that's, like, kind yeah. of a, look, like a man. That's just a man. <laughs> but, like, that's just Sorry a man. To this but he's man. somebody that, like, most can of the really people I've seen talking role, about it, like, role. he's very, like, kind and charismatic. Yeah. Like, he's somebody when you watch him, you're like, Ooh. I've I've, like... I've only watched, like, one or two trailers, but, like, I haven't really seen him act, so, like, I'm, like, waiting, yeah. you know? Right. So, like, I'm very excited because I'm going to a drive-in, um, mm-hmm. like, my first drive-in. I'm very excited because we just don't want to go into a movie theater um, just with COVID and stuff. Like, I I want to sure. eat movie theater popcorn. That's, like, the only time I allow myself, like, cherry Coke because I'm not a huge, like, soda person. But at the movies, mm, I do love cherry Coke. And so um, – I'm just imagining you walking in, like, Nicole Kidman – like like the Nicole me. Kidman, but yeah, that but yeah. with you with your cherry coke, <laughs> but like complete in the what like pantsuit or whatever it is that she's wearing. That this is cinema, you know. It is. It really is. So I'm excited. Ooh. We're here. It's TBR Tuesday. If you didn't know, <laughs> romance your TBR. Hannah is me. Caroline is me. Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. And <laughs> uh yeah, nothing else. We we can't actually fit anything else um legally. The FCC requires us to start books now. So just in FCC. case you didn't know. <laughs> Not the FCC. <laughs> Why are they on our case? It they the FCC was the person who left us the one star. <laughs> My, my friend i was looking and uh, i need to like refresh our rss feed in our apple podcast thing and then i was like in our account and i saw my friend left like a review and i was like oh that's cute so i like text her and then i look over 
and I see it's all five star reviews except for one one star review and if you did that and you're still listening kudos to you i have Honestly, to assume, yeah that's hater behavior i have to assume the dr doofenshmirtz doofenshmirtz um hi hater by hater shirt we should make those um i'll link that in the show notes um but i have to assume that they're not listening anymore but it was just one one star review and we actually have an enemy now because, like, in the newsletter, you were like, hi, it's like friends and foes uh, or yeah. something. Yeah. <laughs> friends, foes, and listeners. Yes. And and the foes back then, so long ago, were people who dissed Holly Black, the Folk of the Air series, and people who dissed Kiss of a Demon King and Rydstrom. Now, it's this one star review. Now we do have one enemy. <laughs> um you know the that little um, cartoon with the guy wearing the sunglasses and the shirt that says no fears? Oh, and yeah. somebody's like, well, what about such and such? And then it changes <laughs> to one fear. That's us, but one enemy. <laughs> I just find it so funny. Because on Spotify, you can't see, like, you can't see the breakdown of reviews or anything. Um, Maybe apparently- that's what lowered our rating was one one-star review. <laughs> The ticket from like to, five to, to four point nine. They had, to, <laughs> they had to hit both. Honestly, I respect them so much because, like, I don't rate things unless I, uh, yeah. other than books, yeah, I won't like rate a podcast unless it's five stars. Mm-hmm. Um, because like I don't care. So yeah. I do respect the hater energy that that takes. Mm-hmm. That's commitment. Mm-hmm. Shout yes. out. Yeah, and honestly, we're twenty two minutes into this episode and we have not talked about books. <laughs> so like, <laughs> do I blame them? No, 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 I don't. <laughs> I just want to know their thought process. Like, what about us annoyed them? Because I, mean, I, would, I, like, I wouldn't change. But I, I would give us know. a one-star review. <laughs> yeah. Pathological people pleasers. <laughs> I wouldn't marry me either. The antithetical dream girls. Argumentative antithetical dream yeah. girls. Yes, that's that, us. Yeah. Actually, which Our of us is the argumentical... Maybe? Uh, argumentical there we go argumentative <laughs> i saw a tweet that was like every Ooh, argumentative antithetical dream girl needs a pathological, pathological people please her best friend well i feel like you're the argumentative yeah i was gonna say i feel like you're out here leaving one hate. star reviews i have a little too much hate in my heart right and i'm the people pleaser who's people like please. well i didn't hate this book so three stars <laughs> yeah yeah this all yeah. tracks i like so that. welcome like to that romance or tbr the argumentative answer the dream girl and pathological people please remix um i guess Ooh. well we've successfully tangented so many Dang different it. ways we gotta stop tangenting i mean most of the books i'm gonna talk about we've already talked about elsewhere so like all right well let's really, get into it i don't have yeah. that many either yeah um i guess i can start i'm like looking at my goodreads Okay. Uh, the first one, I'll throw us a little loop-de-loop. It's a contemporary. It is Mrs. Nash's Ash- Ashes. Oh, my gosh. Okay. I did not say that. Mrs. Nash's Ashes by Sarah Adler. Um, this one is a tricky one because I don't think I would ever reread it because it made me so sad. Oh. And, like, well, because it's about, like, her, like, carrying her dead best friend who was like 80 her ashes across the country to like go to the nursing home where the like the past lover of this dead friend is like in hospice Mm. and so like it's already and i didn't it didn't really hit me until like 50 percent onward and then like the end really just like got me and i don't like confronting mortality i don't like thinking about that kind of stuff and when you heard about like the mrs nash like outliving everyone in her family all like most of her children her husband like it was just a lot um and so like it it's like my mom loves a good romantic drama um where you know she's gonna cry and she's okay with it (sighs) this one because like it the, the secondary one like it was a love story you got like flashbacks to like mrs nash and what was the the other one's name it's not Ro- Elsie. So it was like Rose, I think, and Elsie. Um, so they were, it was like World War II. I think they were both, um, one was a nurse and one was maybe a pilot or something. Um, 
And so, like, you got the flashbacks, and then you knew what happened, and then you've got the present. And so, like, the secondary love story just kind of broke me. But I really loved the the romance of, like, the main characters, Hollis and – what's her name? Millie. That, that's correct. Um, he was real hot. It Like, the romance was great. I really loved it. Like, I'll read whatever Sarah Adler publishes next, like, for the future. Like, it was a great book. It Great debut. Um, but <laughs> it did a number on me. Um, but they, it was like, it had like, it only had like one sex scene, but it was a hot one. Good old Hollis. I can haul my oats any day. Um, uh, he didn't like hauling oats. It was a running thing. So, yeah. It's good. But also sad. But also good. But also sad. Okay. Sure. Oh, the audiobook was good too. It was Mara Wilson from Mrs. Doubtfire and Matilda. Um, I didn't know she narrated audiobooks until I heard her name at the end. I was like, wait, I know you. Every time I go to talk, I hear my dad mowing right outside uh, my window. Oh, so. I can't hear anything if that makes you feel any better. It does. Um, good. But only slightly because it's annoying. Dads mow at the worst possible times why why are you mowing right now no it is 4 34 p.m it, the audacity of <laughs> mowing like why don't we it's all today. decide to mow all at the same time uh-huh, uh-huh. and everybody's uh-huh. like it's mowing hour be, pre- <laughs> it's, <laughs> be prepared it's not the witching hour it's the mowing hour it's when all the dads come out yeah um haunting i agree speaking of dads Ooh. Huh. It doesn't really tie in, but I read <laughs> I read The Beast of Bezek and The ah, Recall yes. of Roth. Yes, you did. It ties in because there's a dad Actually, the tie-in that I was immediately thinking of was that in The Recall of Roth, you get a scene at the end of the hero from The Beast of Bezek with mm. his kid. I oh, yeah, because like, cause The Aw. Beast of Bezek, like, they have to get pregnant. It's like an heir thing, right? Like he No, he doesn't to- want an heir. Oh, so it's not that. Okay, well, I'm wrong. Cool. No, Nothing he new. doesn't. I thought. Um, I'm thinking of another. No, no, no. Book. You're thinking of uh, the Duchess deal, which yeah. is also I, a scarred was... hero, and he needs There's... an heir. Is there another know. scarred hero? There sure that needs is. An heir? But now that I'm thinking of the Beast of Bezik, there's like a scene when they're at like a party and they're like on a bench, right? Yeah. Like they're like outside. Yeah, that imprinted. Yeah. And then they're in the regular Roth, there's like the opera scene, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, or like no, something. No, no. The opera is the Beast of Bezek. Uh, is okay. Rachel of Roth is there's a an auction. Oh. Okay, let's back up. The Beast of Bezek, <laughs> if you haven't read it, you should. It's Amelie Howard. She's it's great. a Beauty and the Beast retelling. He's very scarred and, you know, traumatized from the Does war. He have a pool? No. Yes. 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 Oh, I'm like, what the fuck kind of book am I thinking about? I'm like, if this man doesn't have a pool, I literally- he does have a pool. He does have a pool. Um, <sighs> I was th- there are so many scarred heroes who swim. that was gonna send me over the edge. Uh, <laughs> I was like, if this be man doesn't have a pool, reason, it's gonna be my thirteenth reason. If this man he doesn't does have a pool, have a pool. Um, mm-hmm. she Astrid is. A shrew and I love her for it. She has a little sister. Her parents are dead. Uh, <laughs> dead. That's my Olaf quote once again. Her parents are dead. They have these terrible, uh, a terrible uncle and aunt, but mostly uncle who stole all their money. Yeah. And is trying to marry them off to this guy who, like, came on to her and then broke her engagement and told everybody that she's a mm-hmm. slut, as you do, and ruined her reputation. And now he's after the sister and she's like, oh no. I won't get my money until either I get married or I turn whatever. And I've got a few more months to go. So she pulls up at the Beast of Bezik's castle and is like, I'm here to marry you and catalog your artifacts because I heard you needed that. Which isn't an innuendo, but it should be. Uh, and like, he's like, catalog your artifacts. Well, you yeah, know what's so crazy works. is I don't want a wife. <laughs> and she's like, but you've got one. And he's like, no, I don't. Um, but they end up fleeing his castle anyway. And he's like, what the fuck are you doing here? And she's like, help. And he's like, all right, <laughs> fine. I guess you can stay. 
and then ends up announcing that they're betrothed because the guy, the bad guy, pisses him off. Oh yeah, and he's like, yeah. "Well, we're engaged," yeah. and I respect that. I really do. <laughs> but he still doesn't want an heir until the end. Whatever. It's Beauty and the Beast, but she's a shrew, and I like it. Um. And then the Ray Kell of Roth is the sister who like has her own thing going on in the background where Astrid's like trying to save mm-hmm. her and she's like, don't worry about it. I got it handled. And she ends up married to another guy who's like kind of a friend of the Beast of Bezix mm-hmm. and then immediately consummates the marriage and then fucks off for three years. <laughs> As you do. As, As you yeah, do. I- I've done it many times. You know? Sure. It, that one was <laughs> steamier than I. That one was the one yeah. where he owns the uh kind of scandalous club and she anonymously goes to a oh. an auction that they do well there also is- she they're trying to seduce each other anyway or she's trying to seduce him she goes to an auction that they hold every year where like all the proceeds go to this shelter that he owns although she doesn't know that initially uh-huh. um but they auction off men and it's not for like sex but it, i mean unless they want it to be i guess like the yeah. men do um but it, they usually, like, do other things that you can buy the men for. But she buys her own husband and then blindfolds yeah, him. you're right. And then she ruins his life. Emily Howard has um, one that you need to – I don't know if you've read it before. Um, it's a novella in that series. The, the Wolf, Wolf of Westmore. Westmore. That's the next one. It's so good. It's so hot. There are literally, like, I believe there, there are cups in the shape of the hero's dick. Like, yeah, it's great. It's hot. There's like, I believe there's like some bondage in it. It's Little Red Riding Hood meets Romeo and Juliet, according to um, the summary. I read it when it was part of an anthology. I think it was the Big Duke Energy, um, but it's like independently like published outside of that now. Um, That was like a five star novella. That's great. So I love Emily's writing. She's great. You have to read Queen Bee. Cause that's out. That's out now. I wanna. I need to figure out the age rating on that because it, I have like a twelve-year-old niece. Huh? Yeah. It's it's YA. Um. Well, I know, but I mean, like, yeah. There's no sex, and there's no real like talking about it. Um. I think it would be okay for like a twelve-year-old. I mean, if I, I she's coming this summer, and so I was gonna mm-hmm. like buy it and read it and like maybe annotate it and then give her an annotated version so it would be like we're reading it together but I but the the other side of that is that because I would be reading it myself I can like screen it yeah you should um if she hasn't read uh the dangerous alliance or dangerous alliances it's like it's not an illustrated like there's no people on the cover um but I read that one when I was like first getting into the genre because it's also YA and there's definitely like no sex either in that one um Mm. she's like trying she's like people are trying to kill her and he's like the neighbor neighboring guy uh by dangerous alliance by janika cohen um i liked it a lot and she has like another one i think or something but that one was fun um and then i read the Oh, gosh. It was, like, another YA one. That one wouldn't be for a 12-year-old. Um, but it was also fun. I think I put it in the newsletter. Like, one of our mm. – not this. It was. It's called Bell Guard by Jamie Lilac. It's, like, oh, a yeah. She's All That clue. It's, like, very similar to She's All That. Um, and it's, it's an odd one because it's not – like, it is historical. But that's really just for vibes because it's basically a contemporary, like, YA just – telling you it's historical but it was still really fun um and the cover is super cute so okay going to things that are definitely not for 12 year olds or anyone (laughs) (laughs) of the young ears i read the game of duke series by grace calloway um i had said in a previous episode that i was rereading regarding the duke which is the amnesia one it's book three in the series because i had already read it and i really enjoyed it Um, So then I read that one and then I was like, why don't I just like read the entire series? Um, So then it was like the Duke identity, um, enter the Duke, and then regarding the Duke, the Duke redemption, and then the return of the Duke. So there were five. Um, They were all very good. I think the last one was the only one I gave three stars to. It wasn't bad. I think I was just 
it was just like my least favorite of the plots. Um, and then regarding the Duke is the only one I gave five stars to. Um, but the other ones were very surprising in good ways. Um, I mean, Grace Calloway, she loves adjectives. Let me find my notes because boy, did I have some words that I wrote because Grace Calloway said, fuck it. Ooh. <laughs> Okay, his meaty staff, his oh. raging meat, his oh. veined meat, his fleshy like meat. pole. So we're clear. I don't like meat. <laughs> no. Don't like that. I have a note. Oh, my God. He's at the opening of her womb. LMAO. <sighs> and I also have a face-sitting note. There are a few face-sitting ones in that series, so. You're in for a lot. You know, your a ears will meat. be ravished. Your ears will be ravished. Um, Yeah crazy crazy times but as a whole i enjoyed the series a lot um and it was a good just kind of like palate cleanser in between my great slump of 2023 and onward i think i'm finally out of it can't say for certain but i think i'm out so well no i'm i'm not in a slump but i (sighs) i'm reading much slower than usual yeah yeah i've been watching a lot of bob's burgers which is kind of funny because with the internship just being done Mm mm-hmm you would think I would be like, time to read. And instead, I'm like, yeah. it's time to sleep. I mean, <laughs> respectable. I respect that. That's what I think about my weekends. And then I just sleep. So, cannot cannot blame you. Uh, Well, uh, what did I read? I read another Beverly Jenkins, the one and mm-hmm. only. Um, This one, Wild Rain, is Wild the, Rain. the second... I think it's Women Who Dare. Is that series? Mm-hmm. It's the most recent one. Yep. To Catch a Raven is the third one. Um, and it's also so the the heroine is the sister of Colton Lee from who spring. is the hero. Was it Spring? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who is the the hero in Tempest, which mm-hmm. is the third book in the Old West series? So it's his sister, uh, Spring, and then this journalist from like the the northeast i think he's from like washington dc who's coming to interview colton um Mm. and like do an article on him and she like finds him having fallen off his horse in a snowstorm and like takes him home with her because she's like all right oh and he like twisted his ankle or something so he's injured and now he's living with her for a while just a little while. And then he goes and gets a room, but then he gets, like, shot, so he has to come back and live with her again. And also they're, like, hooking up because she wants, like, a temporary thing. And he's like, uh-oh, I think I'm in love with this woman, but it's temporary fine. Temporary fix by One Direction enters the chat. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, and, the, I mean, it's, it's the Old West. I mean, where are, Montana? Is that where it is? Is that where they head at Regan? I'm going to say yes with a 50% certainty. I can't tell if I think it's Montana because the Kit McBride, I mean, the, the McBride books are in Bucks Creek, Montana. And so I'm just like, yeah, yeah. of course, Montana. It's not, it wouldn't be Michigan. No. I so I feel like it's Montana. However, it could maybe not be. But the point mm-hmm. is, it's all those the old states West. together. Yeah. You're in one of them, <laughs> you're in you're the in. Midwest. <laughs> You're in the wild, wild west. Um, I, I mean, yeehaw. Um, yeehaw. Yeehaw. Uh, there's an evil white man, as there usually mm-hmm. is with Beverly Jenkins. He gets his comeuppance. Amazing. Ben also kind of, Ben, uh, the, the, her, their granddad. Oh, the, yeah. The like, mean one also Who gets his. made really shitty food. Yeah. Regan was so right for that. And it's also he just was like, like, this is disgusting. Like, not like, a good yes. person. So no, he's that bad. also. So he, like, uh, I, I say redeems himself, but also he dies. So, like, like you, you had to take yourself out to mm-hmm. redeem yourself. And yeah. we got that. Like, okay. I, I appreciate that. Um, All the comeuppances... This Can man is so and... down bad for her. Immediately. I like the reporter element. That's fun. He's fun. Um, there's like a horse taming 
bit because she she's like a rancher. She brings in horses. Mm-hmm. Um. Yep. Vibes. Nice. That's well, all I'll got. I'll go into just the I read all of the Old West. So Forbidden, Breathless, and Tempest. Um, my favorites are the opposite order. So it would be Tempest, Breathless, and then Forbidden. Um. Not. I mean, we've talked about them in most like most recent episodes like we've said enough i think um i just need to like the first one it was right at the end there was like kidnapping people getting shot i was like what's happening i mean i will say wild rain 96 percent is oh, when no, the have, like yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, it wasn't kidnapping but it was like in the yeah. same vein i have 96 percent I'm, I'm looking at my breathless it was 97 percent when she gets Wild. kidnapped I was like, we were so close to having zero characters it. getting kidnapped. I love marker, it. All hell breaks loose. <laughs> I, I like, love what? it so much. I'm and like, it, thank you, Beverly. It is the wild, wild west. It is in Breathless. The kidnapper was like, yeah, I don't, I don't. That was really random of me. I don't know why I did that. I was like, yeah, <laughs> what? <laughs> me after making any decisions. <laughs> I was like, Regan better kidnap someone in Tempest. No, and honestly, she there was someone. She did. Like there was there was still kidnapping in Tempest. Um, but it worked. It all worked. Um, I really had a great time with that series. Again, that kind of helped break the slump too. Um, I mean it's Beverly Jenkins, so it really worked. Um, in both Forbidden and Breathless. I don't think it was in Tempest. Um, Beverly Jenkins uses the word baby in the best possible way. It's like twice per book, so it's not you know oversaturated or whatever but just the way i think one was like baby and then one was like baby girl maybe it wasn't tempest i'm not gonna review um but it just brings her heroes up like 10 million notches oh no baby girl was an indigo um and so like just the way she like adds it in there when i'm like least expecting it ovaries explode um is what happens to me um we've talked about the nicknames before i yeah. think it's the indigo episode we've talked about yep. that but uh Kent Randolph and Duchess gets me every time. Mm-hmm. Duchess. <laughs> he also says something about her, oh, her something mouth. Ooh. Her, like she's talking back to him, and he says something mm-hmm. about her something something mouth, and she's like something something me. mouth. That's sexy. Oh, it starts with like a C, I think. Hold on, not me. Like pausing to go to Libby to download. <laughs> The ebook. These are the sacrifices we make, okay? And you're also making a sacrifice if you're listening to this. I mean, we'll cut some of this, but also suspense. But keeps also the suspense thrill. <laughs> keeps the thrill alive. Borrow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so serious right now. Read with Libby app. <laughs> yes, let me search. You know when you just search mouth? <laughs> well, literally, I uppity. was uppity. I feel like there was another one though. No, it's many times they refer to that. Uppity? He keeps calling your uppity mouth's been wanting another taste. Ooh. I can't, I'm trying to find the first one. Um. Oh, it looks like somebody else said it and he just like took it. Wow. Searching mouth in this ebook is a fascinating <laughs> trip. Um. <laughs> ugh, okay, but I did enjoy kissing your uppity mouth. You're a very passionate woman, Duchess. Kent Randolph can get it. <sighs> Hot. Uh, but you have to say please, darling. Hello. I, I Look, this man is a cowboy and something about that makes your heart yeehaw. Makes it really does gallop. it for me. It really mm-hmm. really mm-hmm. really does it for me. Anyway. Amazing. Yep, that's all I have love to that, say. Love that. Love that for us. Ken Randolph. Love that man. Um, oh, I only have one more. Oh. oh. My book club read A Night to Surrender by Tessa Dare. Oh, yeah. Which means at about 8 p.m. last night, I had like an hour left in the Omni Howard audiobook, and I was like, uh oh. And you hadn't started the test. <laughs> I, I remembered we were meeting this morning. Uh, I mean, at like 11.30, but I was like, oh, mm-hmm. man. So I <laughs> finished oh the Emily Howard, and then I started the Tessa Dare at like 9. 
BPM. And I just put it on. I mean, I inch, I started at like 2.5 speed and then kind of gradually inched it up as I got used to it. So I. <laughs> and OK, so here's the thing. It is an 11 hour audiobook, but the narrator is slow enough that I was able to get yeah. it up to like 2.7, 2.75. So I think it only took me like four hours, mm-hmm. and I de- I listened until like I don't know maybe one or so in the morning, and then I for some reason woke up way before any of my alarms at like seven thirty this morning and couldn't fall mm-hmm. back asleep. And I was like, well, while I'm laying here, let me just. It was it was fate telling you to read the goddamn. I think book. that's what it was. I think my brain yeah. was like, hey. I did that I did that one time when I had it. I like went to bed and I was like, okay, this episode is just not getting posted. It was like a Thursday night and I was like, I can't do it. And then I woke up at freaking six AM and I couldn't and I was like, okay, this is the sign and then I did it. I tend to <laughs> like wake up the show before my alarm anytime there's like if there's something I have to be at that's very yeah. stressful or if I'm traveling, yeah. my body wakes me up and is like yeah. we're stressed and I'm like, Okay, I guess we're doing things now. So that's what happened this morning. And I just laid there and sipped my coffee and finished my Tessadere at 2.7 whatever speed. <laughs> you want to nice. see some real speed? Um, <laughs> me what listening to have? audiobooks. Uh, what did you think I, about it? I thought it was fun. Um, I mean, I think obviously it was setting up Colin and yeah. Minerva to be better. Oh, but My babies. I know. Um, I love those bitches. It wasn't. As like it's not the funniest Tessa Dare I no. read by any means. Uh, that didn't necessarily mm-hmm. bother me. It I have to reread it. I don't remember a lot about it. I remember like reading it and being like, oh, that was cute. And I then I read it. Col- I read Colin and Minerva's and I was like, oh. Yeah. So this is what the hype is. Cause I think that was like I had a, I had read her most recent series, but I hadn't gone back to her like original stuff, uh, or like her later stuff. And so I I wasn't like I wouldn't say I was impressed with book one, but I had a good time where I was like super impressed with book two when I read. Yeah, I could see that's like I kind of the problem with like most of the people in that book club had not read a historical romance or one girl like oh. d- like hasn't read one that she likes, and mm-hmm. so I was like, Does well, she like this one? no, she didn't. She was like, it just felt like very silly, and I was like, no. okay, so. Tessa Dare writes rom-coms. Give, give her flowers from the store. <laughs> there we go. Courtney, I don't know if she listens to this podcast. Courtney, read Courtney, flowers from the storm. Read flowers from the storm. She just thought it was, like, silly. Didn't like it. Um, I think also this one was off-putting because – well, for some of them. Yeah. Because it plays into – and I think she does it very facetiously, and I actually enjoyed that element. But this idea of, like, I'm a manly man, and you need a man yeah. to be a man. And she's, like – you're emotionally constipated and need a hug, which, like, I I think is a very fun in the like, water way to while do I'm giving that. you physical therapy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or she's like, pull yourself together, um, and like actually kind of mm-hmm. discounts all of the manly man stuff because the whole point is that he has to get over himself and his pride mm-hmm. to like be happy. But I think for somebody who hadn't read a historical romance and was already yeah. expecting, like, yeah. All of the, like, various manly man things were probably mm-hmm. a lot. Which, fair. Also, the dad didn't get enough of a comeuppance for, spoiler alert, uh, blowing a kid's foot off with his cannon. Sure did. That poor kid. <laughs> he got slapped in the face and that was it. And I was like, you I... get no consequences? When will you learn? Or your actions you actually learn? don't have consequences. You just get slapped um, in the face. Yeah, I mean, it was fun. It was yeah. like not not like impressive, but I think it did the job mm-hmm. of setting up the rest of the series. We were also talking. I was trying to explain that there are a lot of historical romance series, honestly, kind of contemporary too, but it's more obvious in historical, where the first book is always the kind of like maternal, yeah. very protective heroine, and that makes perfect sense to me. Why you would need that character to have her yeah. love story first, like in the Raven Elves and stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, Lisa Kleypas does it more than anybody else. But mm-hmm. I, ju- the Elizabeth Everett's series is the same way. Yep. Yep. Violet. Uh, any siblings? It's almost always in age mm-hmm. order. It's always the oldest sister for like, which again makes total sense to me. Like, can you imagine yeah. Minerva trying to have her little romance with Colin while Susanna no. is the Susanna at the beginning of the series? No. No, No. she would be all up in their business. The little parts you get, because I think you have Susanna's POV in Collins, like in book two. The 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 head shift, the head hopping Mm -hmm. in um 
her books are really fun after book one because like you see it oh god it's so and the stuff you learn i mean the head hopping in book one was fun too you get random yeah. colin and minerva scenes which by the yeah. way i took two notes the entire time i was reading this book and i i did really like the main romance however both mm-hmm. of my notes were colin related like oh, you're not the main man. character my guy um one of which was just me noting the scene where all the women are out shooting and colin goes i find this scene oddly arousing and i was like relatable king you're so real for that. And the other one is that Colin is quite literally the Old Spice commercial where he's trying to <laughs> – it's, like, almost a direct quote. He's trying to rile the men up to go, like, take over the little tea yeah. shop. And he's, like, be manly men, like, take back your town or whatever. And he legitimately says, look at yourselves. Now look at me. Now look back at yourselves. What like what's the di- I'm the real man like he literally or, look at me now look back at yourself yeah. like he says that and I was like Colin like, not the old spice <laughs> oh um, also didn't take a note however there is a scene where he and Bram like stand off and they're mad at each other and he's like you're my cousin and we're like the only family we have and then Bram like punches him in the face and the <laughs> stomach. It makes sense in context. Um, well, actually, no, it doesn't. But he does like punch <laughs> Colin in the face. Honestly, and all I could Colin think of that. was, yeah. But then they like become better, mm-hmm. and all I could think was, this is the most like Roy and Jamie arc. <laughs> <laughs> yes, like Colin is the most Jamie Tart fucking character. You're I've so ever right. Read. <gasps> he is. You are not wrong. I know. I know. Wow. Um, that's all I have to say, actually. It was a Amazing. good time. Well, I am so excited for you to read that series. Um, get tissues for book four. Oh, Lord. Um, yeah. I don't know for the rest, but book four is great as well. God. Um, I talked about this one briefly in the newsletter, so I'm just going to mention it. It's just That Summer Feeling by Bridget Morrissey. It comes out on the day of the TBR Tuesday, so, like, that's relevant. Um, perfect for summer. Um, you can read the newsletter for more details, but I had a really good time and I really enjoyed the audiobook. Um, same thing with Say Yes to the Princess. Um, that arc doesn't publish for a while, I don't think. Um, but that's again, uh, Cheris Michaels and boy, do I love her writing. That was a weird book. That, I don't even, July 11th is when it comes out. There's a scene where she just like, licks his neck and like just licks that man for like pages and it was so odd but it was so fun good it it, like i don't even it was the weirdest experience sometimes you lick men sometimes you hit them over the head with a bag of rocks because it was kind of like not necessarily like the romanovs but she was part of like the french court and then her father was beheaded and um so not even her, a little bit the romanovs no but like <laughs> in my head yes but in reality no not it all. was just the french revolution well it was the french revolution so like i i've read her like authors know at the end so she like added characters and like obviously like this wasn't real or anything but sure. um her siblings are missing because they all got like split up after Ooh. her mother is in spain i think with her lover and then um obviously papa doesn't have a head anymore. Papa. Um, so, so, she, so she's traumatized and doesn't like crowds and has been living in um at like the Queen's place um since for like ten years. And then she gets like word of her brother, uh, or like she thinks she sees him. So she's like, ooh, I have to go find him. And so this one you have like the royal fixer who is like charged with like keeping her like quiet and like the people in the English court don't want her finding her sibling and stuff. So it's a whole thing. Uh, so basically he's like her human security blanket. It's just so sweet, their relationship. Cause he is so opposed to like being like a bad person. Like he is genuinely so nice. So when he gets the order to like seduce her and like keep her busy, he's like, I don't want to do that. That's not nice of me. And so he's just like, the most charming 
like nice person. It was again a weird book, but it was a lot of fun. And it's a new series. It's called The Hidden Royals. Um, and I, because I had reread um, A Duchess by Midnight before just to see if there was like any connection, but I don't think there was. Um, so yeah, it was just I don't know. My jaw was just like open for like half the book. I was like, what am I reading? In a great way. So there's that. What else? Do you have any more? Nope. Ooh, okay. Well, I read The Bare Knuckle Bastards by Sarah McLean, and we're going to do a whole episode on it. So um, I just need y'all to know that Ewan is that bitch. He did nothing he was so wrong. Hot. He was so hot. That was an amazing book. That book and Daring in the Duke and um, A Rogue's Rules for Seduction – like, Wait, live Daring in the live- Duke was Ewan's book. Yeah. Oh, I thought you said and. Oh, oh no, I like, was like that book and Daring in oh, the Duke. And I oh, was no, like- no, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. I said number three, but I didn't actually say the title. So got it. Yes, it's Daring in the Duke, the the third one. Um, that one and like A Rogue's Rules for Seduction are like the two, like in my mind, best ways to write like a second chance, like groveling. Like, they did it differently, but I just love how Ewan was, like, respected boundaries after <laughs> maybe not respecting some boundaries. And he just was like, yeah, she has to come to me because I, like, she said I couldn't follow her. And it was just so good, so hot. He was her throne. Um, Loved that for me. And my favorite heroine of the bunch was Felicity from book one. But, I mean, also um, Grace in book three. But... Felicity was so good. I just love how she, like, yelled the devil. I mean, he's so dramatic. His name is Devil. I just, it was just such a, <laughs> I don't know, over the top fun series, um, which then led me into reading Bombshell and, um, oh, I didn't even put on my tracker and Heartbreaker. Um, so I reread those because I have the knockout arc. Um, and so, again, just rereading – I mean, I loved both of those books, but, like, Heartbreaker, his, like, revolu- revelation of what's in that box takes me out every time. He is so good. Um, yeah, that that was great. And then I read A Duke by Default by Alyssa Cole. Um, it was my fault that it took me so long because it was in the midst of a slump. So, like, I started it, and then, like, I went and breaked for, like, a lot of other books. I came back to it. Um, but overall it was very fun and the premise was great. She literally like goes over to Scotland to be an apprentice for this like blacksmith guy. And then she does research cause she's supposed to be kind of like his PR, but also apprentice. Um, I have no idea where this like premise came from. I respect it though. And then she like digs up information that reveal that he's a Duke. And so then it's like his Duke training and it Tavish. I mean, it was fascinating i mean i I just love when it can have like contemporary romances but they still have historical elements like dukes and stuff like that um and then my last uh one i guess is the it's like a ya like historical like murder mystery series um the first one is murder for the modern girl by kendall culper um and then i read a starlet secret to a sensational afterlife um that one was my favorite it was a really good audiobook it, it's just come out so um mm-hmm. it's like in the the 30s so she's um like an up and coming like starlet like a film actress and then he is a stunt man but then he like gets called to a screen test and he's her like pretend boyfriend for the series like for the press it's such an odd series because in the first book, I don't know if these con- constitute as spoilers or not, but there's like a paranormal element to both of them. The first one, the heroine can read minds and the guy can like sh- shape shift. Like he can like, cha- he's like um in X-Men uh, mystique. Like he can just like change like his face and body and do whatever the fuck he wants so it's a i I was so confused i was like what is happening why that one that audiobook was a little bit stressful um the narrator was just like very like she went real fast and um had like the 
the 20s kind of like if you've watched night in the museum too when amy adams is amelia Earhart in all of those like you know mm-hmm. phrases i'm not a huge fan of those i do, they they're grating to me um so i wasn't a huge fan of that one it was still like three stars it was a good mystery i had no clue what was happening um but i really enjoyed the starlet secret to a sensational afterlife um the 30s are a little bit more because she was like a flapper in book one um and then in book two she's it's like the book one's little sister um Mm -hmm. and in that one the um heroine what can she do she can see ghosts yeah that's the main (sighs) part of the book and then um, the hero is, like, invincible. So, like, he's a stuntman because he literally can't be killed or hurt or anything. Um, and so, yeah, I loved the production of the audiobook in the second one because Jesse Valinsky is my favorite audiobook narrator for YA stuff. Um, she narrates Lynn Painter's better than the movies. Um, and whatever her... The do-over. I'm like looking at my shelf. The do-over. Um, she's a great narrator. Anything I can read by her, I will. Um, her guy voice is so good. She's just she's phenomenal. Um, and Andrew Iden did the guy voice, which I think he works so well in YA because his like the voice he does for heroines sounds like YA. Like he makes it, he like ages them down for me. And so like I don't like him as his um Teddy Hamilton. I'm not a huge fan of him there, like in adult stuff. But I don't mind him in YA stuff. So it's like dual narrated by Andrew Iden and Jesse Blinsky. And um, I would read more in the series. I'm assuming each of her siblings is like getting a book. So I'll be interested to see like where the supernatural element goes in the future because <laughs> she's covered a lot in two books. Because <laughs> um, that one was about like all these uh, female like movie stars Um, the ghosts are like haunting her because they were all killed and like covered up um, as probably actually happened in real life because the film industry was very terrible. Um, But yeah, so that, that marks the end of the books that I read. I'm, and like I said, I'm currently reading knockout um, and I'm rereading the Mark Marquis makes his move by Dan and Quincy because we both have that arc. Um, so I wanted to get back into that world. I don't know if they're connected or not, but I figured why not? I can always use some cheating that I condone. That wasn't even cheating, but like she would have been justified. So that's where I am at. Indeed. Mm-hmm. Indeed. 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 Indubitably. <laughs> I got Most expeditiously. Well, we have a change for oh. our um, old school school. A substitute teacher's coming in. Um, instead of a movie day, it is us not wanting to physically read The Flame and the Flower until the audiobook gets reproduced with Ashford McNabb narrating. And that launches, I believe, like July 11th, if you're curious. Well, the current is a, it's a big day in books. Yeah. I mean, it's five days before my birthday. Love that. Um, the There is an audiobook for that one, but the guy, in the nicest way possible, sounds heinous. So I could not listen to that. And I was like, the ebook was checked out, and I looked at my copy, and the text is so small. I couldn't do it. And I was like, what if we move that to later, and then we move something up? And then we get to listen to the audiobook when it comes out. So we have moved Texas Destiny by Lorraine Heath up to, I believe it's, is it, it's a, a, the next one. So it's not this week, which is uh, the Flowers Flowers, flowers from the storm. the storm. Then week after that is like, we're, uh, we're going to, is it like a secret? It's something. Uh, yeah, it's something. It's secret. We don't know. <laughs> and and then after that, it's so whatever so that we day. We just do not know what we're doing. <laughs> and then after that, not secret, secret, um, is not uh, now. Oh, my God. I can't talk. It's n- June 16th. June 16th is now Texas Destiny by Lorraine Heath. And I believe The Flame of the Flower is now August 11th. Um, so. 
do with that what you will. I'm very excited. I adore Lorraine Heath. And um, Eve Kaminsky narrates that audiobook, and I adore her as well. She narrates um, the book four in the Tessa Dare series, and she does a great job. So very excited and um, thought you should know. Um, 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 I guess just to say, if you were looking at the show notes for the last episode and you were like, what happened? Um, we talked about so many books that I literally ran out of character space and I had to like delete all of our like bottom things. I couldn't put any links in there because I take up a lot of like character limit for some reason. So like if you subscribe to our newsletter, you'll get links to like the show notes, Google Drive, and then in the drive, like the actual full filled out show notes are always there. So like, yeah, that would probably be helpful. We kept saying in the episode, yeah, we'll link it below. We could not physically link it below. So, <laughs> unfortunate. We um, were unable. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I'm so sleepy at this point. The only thing I can contribute is just saying things in funny voices. Is accent work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> accent work. I am actually just Ice Spice. Just facts. <laughs> facts. Karma is my bestie. <laughs> Guys, unironically, I kind of love the Ice Spice version. Like, I I like it was live. Was the production good? No. Yeah, I Do like I... it live. <laughs> okay, but am I going to go facts every single time I listen <laughs> to Karma now? Yeah. Me and Bad Blood. <laughs> She's fine. She wasn't yeah. doing oh, anything. <laughs> angry version every single time I listen to Bad Blood. No, in the in the studio version of the Karma remix, I don't quite understand why it's so slow. Like no, it's weird. the rap. But in but I watched like a snippet of the live performance and she like speeds it up, which sounded a lot better. So who's to say? I don't know anything about music, but facts. I, I don't know, but I unironically love facts. Did you watch the video? Yeah. Yeah, she gets her own little moment in the sky facts. to go facts i love it i wish i was like being ironic i'm not i think that is so funny i don't i don't know if it was meant to be funny but it is so <laughs> that's what i have to contribute facts oh, facts facts no printer <laughs> well this was an unnecessarily long episode for well, maybe you not can a lot just of books. Chop about. out a lot of the beginning of us just being nonsensical. Yeah, we'll see what happens there. <laughs> um, have a great Tuesday, and we will see you on Friday with flowers from the storm with special Ooh. guest Alexandra Fasti. She was marvelous, and um, we got some info on the Halifax um, sisters and brother so just putting that out there it was a very fun chat so uh ta-ta for now in the words of winnie the pooh or in the words of jamie tart it's just poopy oh poo poopy no i got it it's just an interesting <laughs> note to end this podcast on oh yeah Okay. Note. Uh, bye. <laughs> Ma? La? There we go. <laughs>